What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Game Nights, of course, sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. Now, we've got a very exciting show for you here. We have Cedric Phillips and Emma Handy in town to play Brawl with the new cards from War of the Spark. You know, War of the Spark is a Planeswalker-centric set, which is why we chose to play the Brawl format for this episode, because in that format, you can have Planeswalkers as your commanders. Very exciting. And if you want to get your hand on any of these new awesome cards or perhaps build a Brawl deck of your own, head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. That's all you have to do. Type that in, and then you have access to all of the cards from War of the Spark. You can build your own Brawl deck or buy any of the brand new commanders. Very exciting. Yeah, you're going to purchase Magic cards anyway. Just use the affiliate link when you do, and you really are supporting this show. Another way to support the show is by going to patreon.com slash command zone. You can contribute to us directly. There's all kinds of rewards and perks. Uh, we have a Discord server. You can yep. chat with Jimmy and I daily if you're You get to watch this episode a day early. Oh yeah, that's another thing patrons get. And yeah. also, our patrons recently were afforded the opportunity to audition to be a guest on Game Nights. And I have a message for all you patrons who sent in audition videos. We're gonna be announcing the winner, the person who's gonna come be a guest on the show. We're gonna announce that on episode 266 of our podcast, the Command Zone podcast, which should be coming out in about a week. So make sure you stay tuned to that. Also stay tuned to the end of the episode because as always, we're giving away a ton of products thanks to Ultra Pro and Card Kingdom. So stay tuned to find out how to win. But first, you gotta watch the episode. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Game Nights. Today, we're playing with two players who are perhaps better known for their tournament experience. Hey, everyone. I'm Cedric Phillips. You may recognize me from StarCityGames.com, the voice of the SCD Tour, North American Marketing Manager for Ultimate Guard and Okie Dokie Dice, and of course, the Cedric Phillips podcast, which I do two to three times a week. Oh, is that all? Yeah, I do a little bit of content. And I am thrilled to be here for my very first episode of Game Nights. Hi everybody, I'm Emma Handy. You might recognize me from StarCityGames.com, commentating on the SCG tour, Twitter, streaming, I work with Tolarian Community College, and this is my first time being a guest here on Game Nights. Yeah, we brought in some heavy hitters because today we're going to be playing the Brawl format and we built all of our decks around the new commanders from War of the Spark. This set has over 30 Planeswalkers in it. That is insane. That means over 30 new commanders were added to the format, and that is so exciting and a little overwhelming. The deck I built today is Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner. So the strategy of my deck is honestly right on the card. Play a bunch of creatures with power four or greater to draw cards, untap permanents that ideally generate a bunch of mana so I can play more creatures to draw more cards, and eventually my opponents just won't be able to keep up. A tried true strategy in Magic. The commander for my deck today is Niv-Mizzet Reborn. The strategy for my deck is ramp into big gold cards. And then Niv-Mizzet helps me draw more of them. So I can just play as many cards as I want and know that I'm gonna have a Niv-Mizzet sitting back to gas me back up. The deck I chose to play today is Rolesque Apex Hybrid. I wanted a chance to play with as many of the new Planeswalkers as possible. So I figured Proliferate is the perfect way to really get the most use out of all of them. My commander is gonna Proliferate and add a ton of loyalty counters to my Planeswalkers, which means I'm getting more value and I'm gonna outgun the rest of my opponents. So I built my deck around Ral Storm Conduit. So this is a spells deck, which means there are a lot of instants and sorceries. My plan is to use Ral's Minus ability to copy some really big spells and build up to an explosive turn that blows out my opponents. All right, let's do this. I'm ready for war. I'm ready to storm off. Let's battle. Welcome everybody to the table. As usual, we have awesome Ultra Pro playmats featuring art from War of the Spark. Ooh, nice. Okay, because it is both of your first time on the show, that means you need to be knighted. Yes. Emma Handy, I knight thee. Dame Emma, arise. Cedric, I knight thee. <laughs> <laughs> sir Cedric. Thank you, sir. Welcome to Game Nights. <laughs> Only one may stand. You got me with the Zelda thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready? So ready. Let's do this. I will draw for turn. 
I will play a Sulfur Falls tapped, and I will pass the turn. Do I get a draw card too? You do. Oh man, it's the best part of magic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Forest and my good friend, Lanwar Elf. Whoa, okay, all right, geez. Mm. The perfect card for the first turn of the game is Lanwar Elves. Everyone knows Lanwar Elves. Super good on turn one, really, really good with my Planeswalker. Love it. We know Cedric's deck is all about playing big creatures and getting value from it. So a turn one mana elf, it means the big creatures are gonna be coming out even earlier. I don't like it. Emma, I'll pass to you. All right, fine. Selesnia Guildgate. Good luck. We'll slow out the gate. <laughs> so my deck has a bunch of guild gates and a bunch of shock lands. These are all lands that tap for two colors of mana in order to make it easier for me to cast all of the gold spells in my deck. But a lot of them do come into play tapped, which kind of stinks in the earlier game. All right, here go. <laughs> I will play an island and pass to you, Josh. All right, I will untap, I will draw, I will play an island, and then I will cast Search for Azkanta. Powerful card. This is probably the best turn two play that I can think of for my deck. It's gonna really smooth out my draws. It means if I'm flooding, I can take those lands and put them into the graveyard. And if I don't have enough, well, I can search deeper for more. So I'm feeling great about my start. And I will pass the turn. All right, I'll untap. Draw a card, best part of magic. <laughs> I can say that every time. I am, yeah. Oh, okay. This yeah. commander literally has it printed on mm -hmm. it, so. I'm going to play Marwin the Nurturer. Oh. This is another really powerful ramp card because if he has a lot of elves in this deck, he can keep making it bigger and bigger. It can tap for more mana and his commander can untap it, meaning he's gonna have access to a ton of mana. This could get really bad really fast. So I know it's only the second turn of the game, but everybody's in trouble. They don't know it, but I know everyone's in some real trouble. That's it for me. Okay, so yeah. you think your mana card's good? I hope it's good. Are you ready for this? Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Demir Guild Gate. Sick. And go. As slow as my deck is, having to play out all of these tap lands, I'm starting to kind of feel some pressure from Cedric's side of the battlefield. I might have to just lean into the political aspect of things in order to not have him just kill me right out the gate. I will drop a turn. I will play a forest, and I will drop the Incubation Druid. Oh man, so much ramp. Cedric's ramping a lot, so I'm gonna join the party. This is a really good card to ramp out with. It's nothing compared to what Cedric's got going on, but at the very least, I know that I'm not falling too far behind. And I'll pass to you, Josh. Okay, I will untap. Search for his content will trigger. I will look at the top card in my library. I will not put it into my graveyard, then I will draw it. All right. I will play an island. Okay. And then I will play Secrets of the Golden City. And I will draw two cards because I do not have the city's blessing. All right. One. I'd much rather wait until I have 10 permanents on board so that I can draw three cards instead of two, but the alternative is not doing anything at all, so it's better to not waste the mana. I'll well, pass the turn to you, Cedric, and your million mana. All right, here we go. Untap, upkeep, nothing, draw, which is the best part of magic. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hang on, everybody, because it's about to get nuts. All right, I'm going to play the very powerful Mox Amber. Oh. Yikes. So much mana. That's good, okay. All right, let's see. Next up for me, let's do Drew to the Cow. Oh boy. That's an elf, so Marwin will trigger so it gets a plus one, plus one counter. Now it taps for two green. He has a million Ooh. mana. Yeah, this is bad. He already gets to untap that. Yeah. Next up is Incubation Druid. <laughs> Happens to be an elf. Happens. That puts another counter on Marwin. We call this good deck building. <laughs> elves, Marwin, elves, it's all coming together. We are doing it, we are launching. Cedric's played five spells this game and every single one of them ramps his mana. We all know for a fact that his commander wants to play big creatures, so this is really bad for the rest of us. All right, so it's Kiora time. Yeah, that was pretty good. All right, I'm gonna activate Kiora and untap target permanent, which will be Marwin the Nurture. Anyone else horrified? Yeah. Cedric, you have enough mana. Cut it out. Stop. I'm your friend. Please just stop. It's turn three. Look at Cedric's board. Look at our board states. He has blown everyone out of the water and he has access to a billion mana. Our only hope here is that he doesn't have very many cards in hand. And so maybe that thing has happened that happens all the time in games where he got all of his ramp spells, but nothing to convert all that mana into damage against his opponents. Now I have all the mana I could possibly need. I'm just missing that one piece. All right. I do have a card left and it is Vivian Champion of the wild. Ugh. This is like a good news, bad news thing. It would have been worse if it was a four power creature. However, this is likely to help him find a four power creature. So I guess it's more bad than good. So I'll activate Vivian, minus two. Look at the top three. I'm gonna exile this one face down. 
and these ones go to the bottom of my deck. I'm feeling pretty good about things right now. I'm not gonna say I'm a favorite, but I'm feeling like I'm a favorite. Really, this start is so insane, so crazy, so nuts. Somebody needs to draw a board five, because if we don't, Cedric is 100% gonna run away with this game. That's it for me, it's your turn. Oh gosh. Totally fine, everything's fine. Yep. Nothing All is... right, everyone, I have a plan. Okay. All right, are you ready? It's, is it playing another? <laughs> just, just give it a second, just give it okay, a second. Okay. All right, I'm ready. This is why we invite pros on the scene, because they do awesome, impactful stuff. Oh, yeah. That's gonna do it. It's not. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take two life from a steam vents. Ooh. All right, and I have ramp of my own. Oh, talk to me. The chromatic lantern. Ooh. This card is going to fix my mana for the rest of the game, so I won't have problems actually casting my spells as long as I have the proper quantity of mana. Honestly, I'm not even worried a little bit about what anybody else is doing because the only thing I can think about is what are we gonna do about Cedric? Here go. I got this. I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna draw the spiciest. Oh, we are in huge trouble. We both have incubation druids. We're both doing equally as well. <laughs> yeah. For I feel sure. like your board's a little more equal. All right. Well, I'm gonna do my cool thing. Jang Yang Gu, Wild Crafter. You put that on your deck just because it looks like you do. Yeah, and it's got a dog in there, like Kiwi. <laughs> oh yeah, it does look like Kiwi. I know. <laughs> so I'm going to minus one Jang Yang Gu, and I will put a plus one plus one counter on my Incubation Druid. <laughs> and now it can tap for three mana of any color. This is a cool bit of synergy that Jimmy's put together here. The Planeswalker gets to put a counter on the Incubation Druid, and it doesn't care where it got the counter from, now it can tap for mana. While I'm doing cool stuff over here, it's nothing compared to Cedric's board, so let's just hope that I can keep this up and not fall too far behind. And that's it, pass turn to you, Josh. Okay, search for his Kanta will trigger. I will look at the top card, I will put it into the graveyard, and then I will draw. That's not a sweeper. That's not a sweeper. That's why I put it in the graveyard. <laughs> Just tight play. I'm gonna play a Steam Vents, I will take two. Then I'm going to tap four and play a Firemind Vessel. That's fine. Cute. Because of the way Cedric is exploding, it's really, really scary to be completely tapped out and he's got that board and is about to untap with it. But my only chance here is really to just get as much mana onto the table so that I can make a big impactful play that will hopefully knock Cedric down a peg or two and give everybody else a chance to get back in this game. All right, Cedric, go ahead. Oh, yes, I will untap. I have a lot of things to untap. I was you, busy last turn. You do. So we've come all the way back around to me and no one's done anything to me yet. Everyone's still setting up, so I gotta take advantage while I still can. I'm going to start my big turn with a Merfolk Brand. Branch Walker. Okay. I'll count that as a whiff. Yeah, it's right. a whiff. Okay, I think we dodged a bullet here. The card he found with Vivian is not a four power creature, so it's not gonna draw him more cards, but it is gonna be able to churn through his deck a little more quickly. All right, explore <laughs> River's Rebuke. Hey, it's a sweep. Oh. oh. I'm going to put the River's Rebuke in the graveyard, so Merfolk Branch Walker will get a plus one, plus one counter because it is a non-land. <laughs> So it's a three, two. So Cedric puts a River's Rebuke into his graveyard here off the Explore trigger, and that is a super powerful card. I'm glad to see it go. On the other hand, I understand why he doesn't need it right now, because Jimmy, Emma, and I, we just don't have very many non-land permanents, so he'd be bouncing like two things. Next, I'm going to play Bioessence Hydra. So it's a 12-12. Oh my, yep. it has Trample? Yep. This is the card that he was looking for. It's huge, it's massive, it has trample, and it is going to end someone's life in like two turns. QR will also trigger because this is a four power creature, so I get to draw a card. Okay, that's okay, that's fine. Next, I am going to plus my Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, targeting my Incubation Druid. So she'll go to three. And because I added a loyalty counter to one of my Planeswalkers, the Hydra will trigger, and it will now become a 13-13. Ooh, okay. And then I'm going to play District Guide. Ah, okay. So that will find me an island. Okay, okay. more lands, that's what you need. And this is an elf, so Marwan will get a plus one, plus one counter up to three. Mm. And then I'm going to activate Kiora targeting Marwan to untap. So Kiora goes down to so five. So Kiora goes down to five. I'm feeling pretty good, you know? I, I finally found a big creature in the Hydra. I've got plenty of mana, and now all I need to do is start chaining together big creatures to be able to draw more cards. Vivian can help me do that, Kiora can help me do that, but once the big creatures start flowing because I've got plenty of mana, this game's over. And, uh, good enough for me. Perfect, love it, don't attack. Untap, I'm drawing my card, and I actually haven't drawn another land yet, Ooh. but hopefully I'll find one with Discovery. 
So first I'm gonna check the top two cards in my deck and there is a land, so I'm gonna put that on top and then put Zakama, <laughs> Primal Calamity in my graveyard as so I'm still pretty far away from that. And then I'll draw this mystery card. After that, I will shock Watery Grave onto the battlefield. Zap. So if I play my own Kiora, does that make us besties or enemies? Oh, besties. All right, please don't lie to me. My own Kiora Behemoth Beckoner in the Besties Pact of 2019. Oh boy. So my biggest goal with this card is not even necessarily to do too much to my own board state, but just to kind of say, hey, we're friends. We're in this together, right? Don't attack me. Eh, it's an interesting political ploy to try, I suppose. Hey, I've got the same card as you, so therefore, or you shouldn't kill me. All right, that's all I got. Okay, I'm going to untap, put off return. Hey, Cedric. Hi, how are you? <laughs> If I leave your board entirely alone, mm -hmm. because I may or may not have a card that you decide to put into the bin at some point, which wouldn't actually do that much against you, but it would slow you down for this a turn. This is convoluted. You're asking for one turn of not being attacked? Not being attacked, yeah. We have a deal. Great. A shrewd negotiator, but I'm buying what he's selling. I'm in, at least for now. I cannot believe that Jimmy isn't going to do anything about this. Are you serious? It's only one turn of him not attacking you. He's got to kill you eventually. Let's see, I'm gonna tap one, two, three, four, five, and cast Grow from the Ashes Kicked. That'll get me two forests. Untapped, too. Untapped, yeah. And I'll tap four and play the very useless Sharkto Crab. Useless. This is a great combo with my Zhang Yang Gu because I'm able to add counters to it and continually tap down creatures around the board. Unfortunately, two of my opponents have Kiora's that untap target permanence, and Josh is playing a spells deck. So, it's fun but not great. So I will use Jang's ability to put a plus one, plus one counter on the Sharkto Crab. When it gets a plus one, plus one counter, I will target your Marwan to tap it down. And it won't untap during your next untap set. In response, I'm going to activate the Marwan and float four green mana, use a mana from the Incubation Druid as well to adapt it to give it three plus one, plus one counters. That's what I wanted you to do anyway, right? It's gonna happen anyway. That's true, we're a team. Pass the turn to you, Josh. Okay. Didn't Rivers reboot when he could. That feels bad. Okay, I will untap. Search for his cancel will trigger. I will look at the top card of my library. I will put that card into my hands. So I go to draw my card this turn, and uh, remember that Cedric problem? What Cedric problem? That was a very good draw. I'm gonna save us. You're gonna what? save us? Everything's gonna be fine. I don't need saving. <laughs> I will tap seven mana, play Star ah! of Extinction. I'm you know so mad right now. <laughs> it's gonna kill all the creatures and the planeswalkers and I get to destroy one land. Jimmy had the chance to help us out here and decided and not to, so yeah, I think it's fair to blow up an island. Okay, island gets wrecked. Acceptable. And then all creatures and planeswalkers. That's what we call flying too close to the sun, my friend. <laughs> I have nothing. I have nothing left. I have a land in my hand. How am I going to recover from this? Everything was going so well, and it's all gone. I don't like Josh anymore. <laughs> Feels a little bad for Cedric here because he has like no cards in his hand, but also you shouldn't have done what you did. That was really scary. Thank goodness for this board wipe. Now we can finally sort of settle into a normal game of multiplayer where everyone's kind of on an equal playing field. I think I've done what I needed to do. Cedric? Your, Best part of the game coming up. <laughs> it's my favorite part. Untap, draw. I will tap five mana and recast my commander. In order for me to get back into this game, I need to find some cards that actually enable me to draw more cards and incrementally get back in this game and replenish my resources because one card every turn isn't gonna do it. Not so big anymore, are you, Cedric? You are not the king of this castle anymore. All right, untap, draw. I like you tapping five for a commander, so I'm gonna cast Niv-Mizzet Reborn. So this is a five mana, six, six flyer that's got the potential to draw her a bunch of cards. This is scary. Maybe I should have blown up one of Emma's lands. Time to spin the wheel and see how many cards we get off of this. All right, one, two, three, okay. four, two, nice five, five, six, we get to look at 10? seven, yeah. eight, nine, Boy. 10. Oh. Got two. All right. 
So there's only two cards that I can actually get here because even though Vivictus Asmati is a multicolor creature, it is three colors. So I can't get that one. But Flower Flourish is a green-white card and Kaya's Wrath is a black-white card. So I can get both of those to my hand. Kaya's Wrath is a good card to know about. Yeah. This is exactly everything I've been looking for this game. It's my next land drop and it's a board wipe. So now I know what my next turn is going to be and I know that I'm not going to die anytime soon. So I'm feeling Feeling pretty safe at this point. If Cedric is able to rebuild somehow or Jimmy finally starts playing the creatures out of his hand, I have a way to catch back up on the battlefield and that feels great. It's always good to know when the player has a board wipe because it means that you're not going to completely, well, do what Cedric did, which is spill out your hand and then lose it all. Now I have eight cards in my hand. I'm going to discard Gatebreaker Ram and I am done. I will untap, upkeep, draw. I'm going to play Blast Zone. All right. So Blast Zone enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it. This is one of the new cards from War of the Spark, and it's awesome. It's a land that has a board wipe effect attached to it, but my hand is junk, and I can't do anything else this turn, so feels kind of bad. All right, Josh, your turn. Okay, I'm gonna untap. Search for cancel will trigger. I'll look at the top card in my library. I'll put that card in my hand. I will play Emergence Zone. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, nice. It's kind of hard to tell what exactly Josh has going on, but he has it going on whenever he wants because of this card. It's kind of hard to play around that, so I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and if he has responses in the middle, so be it. I'm just gonna play big cards that are way more powerful than his cards. Okay, I'm gonna pay three and I'm gonna cast an Is It Lock It? Okay. The board is pretty calm right now. There's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of pressure on me. And I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. I'm holding Spell Swindle in my hand. I'm hoping one of my opponents will cast a really big spell and I'll get so many treasure that it'll set me up for an explosive turn. Fingers crossed somebody falls into my trap. And I will take after my good friend Jimmy and I'm gonna pass the turn. Okay, on tap. Big draw, big draw. Oh yeah. There's the island. That's the island. And then it's your turn. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, on tap. So this board wipe has knocked Cedric out of the game for a long time, and it looks like he's just drawing land after land after land, so he, he's just falling more and more behind. I do feel bad for Cedric, but I also don't feel so bad, because he deserved it. <laughs> okay, I would like to go to my combat step. Hold on, before you do, I'm gonna tap four and the blast zone to put two charge counters on it. If I put my blast zone up to three, not only does it threaten Emma's chromatic lantern, but also Josh's Locket and Cedric's Commander. So hopefully this can delay a little bit of aggression coming at me while I try and rebuild my board. Well, I was going to attack Jimmy, but he realized what his cards do to my side of the battlefield. So I guess I'm attacking somebody else now. That makes me just want to switch sides and attack Josh. Okay, no blocks. Take six. Go to 22. All right, second main phase, time to play spells. I'm gonna tap my Chromatic Lantern and cast Flower. I'm gonna be getting one of them planes into my hand. All right, so I'm gonna play that planes, and then I'm gonna tap three and cast Guild Summit. When it enters the battlefield, I can tap any number of untapped gates I control and then draw a card for each gate tapped this way. I will tap neither of my gates. Interesting. Whoa. Ooh. So my alarm bells are ringing because Emma does not tap her last two gates to draw cards. That signals to me she's got something and it's probably a counter spell. I've been setting up for an explosive turn and that could really throw a wrench in the works. So I gotta keep an eye on it. Your turn, Jimmy. Okay, I will untap, upkeep, draw. I'm gonna cast Finale of Revelation for five. Oof, that's good. Drawing five cards, refilling my hand, and getting all the gas I need? Phew, this is just what the doctor ordered. So uh, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Thankfully, Jimmy bails me out by casting a huge spell. Okay, in response, I am going to cast Spell Swindle. Are you serious? <laughs> Very serious. Are you kidding me? I have nothing. Oh my gosh. So I'll counter that. And because it was seven CMC, I will get seven treasure tokens. Ah, fine. I just spent my entire turn casting this spell and it gets countered. I'm feeling really bad right now. Oh, this is the worst thing that could have happened. All right, pass turn. Okay, I will untap. 
Search for his cancel will trigger. I will look at the top card of my library. I will draw that card. Josh having seven treasure? That is pretty scary. He's gotta have something going on over there, right? He's drawn some cards, he's got search for his Kanta. I'm feeling good about this. He seems like the biggest source of trouble. I think because I have Emergent Zone that I should just pretend it's Fidel Ganori and uh, pass the turn. Oh, Sen's turn. That's me, I'm Sen. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Untap and draw. Okay. I will play a spell finally. Yeah! Call. Adonis Climb. <laughs> <laughs> this card looks pretty bad because I don't have any creatures. Maybe later it could be good, but I can't feel any worse about how things are going right now. All right, Emma, I'll pass to you. I have effects your on your end of turn. Ooh, I like it. I'm going to cast Growth Spiral. Powerful. Okay. So I'm gonna draw a card, and then after that, I get to put a land from my hand onto the battlefield. That will be an Orzhov Guild Gate, which then triggers my Guild Summit to let me draw an additional card. Okay, in response to that. All right, so this is the moment I've been waiting for. Emma is now tapped out. Even if she has a counter spell, she won't be able to cast it, so it's time to make my move. So I'm gonna activate Emergent Zone, so I'll sacrifice it allowing me to cast spells as though they had flash this turn. I'm going to flash out Ral, uh. Storm Conduit. I'm not sure what's going on here. Josh is playing a Planeswalker. Can't use its abilities right now. He's gotta be setting something else up. And then I'm gonna tap three, and I'll play Gutter Snipe. Ugh. This is a really powerful card. It deals damage to each opponent, and that damage can add up super quick, especially since my deck is all instants and sorceries. And then I'm gonna sacrifice six treasures for six mana, two of them blue, and I will play Karn's Temporal Sundering. Ah, jeez. Yep. And I will target Niv-Mizzet for the bounce effect. So I wasn't very worried before because I thought he was never gonna do anything on his turn, but this combo with Karn's Temporal Sundering and giving it flash means that he kind of just got to have his main phase happen whenever he wanted, and I didn't plan for this at all. Also, Gutter Snipe and Ral Trigger, so all my opponents take two damage, and then Ral will be pointed at Emma. So then... That was your end step, so I will... Can I draw my card off Guild Summit? Yep, 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 yep. Oof. This is exactly the kind of thing that I didn't want to happen. Josh is taking more turns, doing everyone a ton of damage, and sending himself super far in the lead. I am dreading this extra turn. It could be the end of this game. Wow. Josh, I deem you a true pirate. Because treasures are wherever you seem to play magic. This is two episodes in a row. I've gotten a lot of treasure. <laughs> hey, if you out there, you want to get your own treasure, Ooh. and by treasure, I mean magic cards, hey. just go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. If you use that affiliate link when you're ordering, well, you can get all these cards from War of the Spark or yeah. basically any card from the history of magic. Card Kingdom has it. You're going to buy those cards anyway. You're going to build your decks. You want all that stuff in it. If you just use that affiliate link when you do it, you really are supporting this show, Command Zone, Extra Turns, all of our content. And if you can't combo off in the game, you can combo off in real life by supporting us by buying Ultra Pro products, by adorning your play area with a cool play mat, deck boxes, dice, sleeves, all of that. Yeah, I really want to show off this Deliver Unto Evil. So cool. Play mat. This is my favorite art in the set, and this play mat is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So buying Ultra Pro products supports the show as well. And I think it's about time, Josh, that we go back to the game in your Extra Turn, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. It may not be as impressive as it looks right now. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up. Thank goodness. Let's see what happens. All right. And then it's my turn. Uh -huh. Okay. So I will untap. Search for his cancel will trigger. I will draw that card. So my issue here is I had a really explosive play on Cedric's end step. But now that it's my turn, I don't have a great follow-up. Then I'm going to pay four mana into my is it locket and I'm going to sacrifice it to draw two cards. Okay, yeah. Using this locket to draw is not a very efficient way to draw cards, so it's a good sign for the rest of us. Then I'm gonna minus Ralph. So the next spell I cast this turn will fork, basically. And I'm going to pay two, and I'm gonna cast Tormenting Voice, discarding an island, and Ral will copy that spell. So I'll draw four. That's a lot of cards cool. in your hand. This is good. It's able to get me some value. I draw a ton of cards this turn, but at the same time, I want it to be super explosive, get a ton of damage on my opponents, and that's not what happened. I just got some value. And Gutter Snipe will trigger again, so everybody takes two. And Rao will trigger twice, because he does trigger on the copies. So I'll deal one damage each to Jimmy and Cedric. <laughs> That feels fair. Go to combat. Don't even think about it. Yeah, don't even think about it. Emma didn't say don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah! So I'll attack Emma yeah. for two. <laughs> it's fine. It's so fine. Everything's fine. 
Uh, then I'll play a mountain, sacrifice the treasure, so I have four mana, and I will play a primal amulet. Okay, honestly, that wasn't so bad. Josh drew some cards, did some damage, but he's not running away with the game right now, so it's honestly the best case scenario. And then I will pass the turn to Emma. All right, so I'm untapping and I'm drawing, and then I'm just gonna take two life for a hallowed fountain. Oh boy. And I'm just gonna cast the most fun card in my deck. In the deck? In the deck. Uh, that's Vivictus Asmati the Dyer. <laughs> Okay, that card is very, very scary. It's particularly bad for me because after it destroys your thing, it only flips permanence onto the battlefield. Most of my deck is instants and sorceries, so I just have a higher chance to whiff than everybody else. This card might actually be good for me because I don't have anything going on and it might be able to turn a land into some awesome creature. Who knows? I'm done after that. Okay, so I'm going to untap, draw for turn. I didn't draw anything powerful this turn and Josh is definitely still the scariest player at the table. Plus, he countered my spell. So Josh, you deserve it. Josh, I'm gonna cast River's Rebuke targeting you. Ugh. Okay, so all my non-land permanents will return to my hand. I mean, I kind of deserve it for the spell swindle earlier, but this is pretty bad. I was all set up. I was gonna be able to deal with some of the stuff out there. And now I'm gonna have to spend at least my next turn or two just catching back to where I was. Yeah, this, this feels horrible. And then I'll pass the turn to you. Okay, I will untap and I will drop. And then I'll play a guild gate. All right, I'm gonna pass turn. And because I have nine cards, so all my non-land permanents got returned to my hand, I'm gonna discard two cards and they will be blink of an eye and Primal Amulet. This is really strange. We know he has cards in his hand because I just bounced them with River's Rebuke. So I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what he's planning. Anything that I play, it's just gonna get destroyed by Vivictus. I'd rather play some stuff at instant speed after the dragon has done its thing and I've seen the outcome. I'm okay discarding the hand size here, honestly, because I've drawn a ton of cards and card advantage is not my problem. The fact that I have no board is my problem. All right, big turn, untap, upkeep, draw, Emma. Let's be besties. Whoa, gosh, man. Here's I'm with you. All right. Prime Speaker oh, Vanifer. Please don't kill it, please don't kill it, please don't kill it, please don't kill it. Now I need some other creatures to work with it, but with Cure on tapping it, Prime Speaker Vanifer could get me all the way back into this game. Please don't kill it. Cedric's gonna owe me big time if I don't kill this. He's gonna owe me big. I like to go to my attack step, which means I will trigger my Hadanas climb. <laughs> Put a counter on my Prime Speaker Vanifer. Now it is a 3-5. I can't activate it just yet. And I have no need to activate my Kiora, and that means that my turn is over. Okay, untap and draw. All right, so I'm gonna play a Simic Guild Gate, which triggers my Guild Summit to draw a card. Yep. And then I would like to move to my combat step. Does anybody have any effects before I declare attackers? Uh no, go ahead. All right. The Victus Asmari, the Dyer, will be attacking. What permanent would you like blown up? Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out who I'm attacking still, but hypothetical world, what permanent would be your preference to get blown up? Forest. Forest? All right. <laughs> so. Seems like a difficult calculation for you. <laughs> I will be attacking Cedric. Ah, uh, I see. That's fine. The way I kind of like to play multiplayer is try to get everyone a little bit closer to dead at once. That way no one feels ganged up on. And also it just makes it to where nobody ends up accidentally being way far ahead as you get into the later portions of the game. All right, I will target Forest. Let's hit this Blast Zone because it's scary. And then I want to blow up an island. Let's send a message. And for me, I will be targeting Guild Summit. Jeez. Okay. Oh. The card's done its job. Okay, so we all flip, and then if it's a permanent, it just comes into play. Okay, so let's all do it at the same time. Oh, yeah. And... Three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Emma gets a 6-6 six, six flying trample. Jimmy gets a proliferate machine. Now I get a mana dork. And Cedric gets a card advantage engine. Definitely feel like I got the short end of the stick here, but honestly, it's better than I hoped for. At least I got something. But here's the thing, Rakdos is here and the show is about to stop, so we may not even be able to keep the permanents we flipped. So then we got, it's we need happening. a coin. Does anyone have a coin? We have a coin. So if it's a minus, it dies. If it's a plus, it stays alive. So let's flip right. for Vivictus. Vivictus, dead. So Vivictus is gonna die. Next. Evolution Sage. All right. Yes. Live. All Evolution right. Sage lives. What about? Medallion Arcanist. Dead. Uh, Dead. 
Okay, Tatiova. Tatiova is so good. Tatiova. Come on. Yeah! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yes! Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. So the dust settles and Vivictus and Vodali and Arcanist die and everything else lives. <laughs> So I get to keep both of my creatures and one of those big dragons goes away? Yes! This was the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. Maybe ever. This is great. Everything's fine. All right, let's tap three and cast Domri, Anarch of Bolas. Uh, row, row. That's good. This card seems very powerful. It's got mana ramp on it and it has repeatable removal because Emma has a huge flyer right now that can kill anything on the board. And then I'm going to plus my Planeswalker and get a red mana and then tap five additional mana and cast Karn's Temporal Sundering. Oh With boy. the target being Tatyova. Ooh, this is really powerful for Emma. She has a Planeswalker, she has a huge flyer, and she's gonna be able to attack again and do so much damage to people. This is a bad spot to be in for the rest of us. All right, I'll move to my next turn. Untap and draw. So I will plus Domri to five, get a red, and then tap these and cast Niv-Mizzet Reborn. So at this point, I'm realizing just how good Niv-Mizzet is as her commander. It is just an unbeatable card advantage engine. Every time she plays it, and she can play it over and over again, it's gonna get her cards. Okay. All right. One, oh. two, oh. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So Storiv and Response Resurgence are gonna go to my hand. Wow. Emma just got a card off of Niv-Mizzet that gives her an extra attack step. Her creatures are buffed up by Domri right now. They're all flying and no one can block them. This is looking really bad for the rest of us. I'm gonna move to my combat step and then have Rakdos the Showstopper attack Josh. All right, so this attack right here is a very, very bad sign for me. Okay, well, I have no blockers, so I will take seven. Yeah, good old Domri. And I will go to 15. We know that Emma can get two attack steps next turn. It's hard to imagine a scenario where she knocks me down this low if she's not intending to finish me off. And then I will cast a Paradise Druid. This card actually is scary to me because with Domri pumping it, even if I kill one of the dragons, I think that means I'm still dead. Ugh, if she just hadn't played a creature here, I would have a chance. I'll pass turn to you, Jimmy. Okay, I'm going to untap. I will draw off the turn. All right, well, I think it's time. I'm going to tap five mana, and I'm going to cast my commander, Rolesk Apex Hybrid. Oh, nice. So when it enters the battlefield, I put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature I control, so I'm going to put them onto the evolution stage. <laughs> All of our life totals are really low when you see two giant flyers on Emma's board, so if the absolute worst happens and Emma decides to point her creatures at me, at least I have a blocker and a chance to survive. That's all I can do this turn because I'm out of mana, so I will pass turn to you, Josh. Uh, so, Jimmy, on your end step, yeah. I'm going to tap six, and I'm going to cast Electro Dominance. X is equal to four. Cool. I'm going to do four damage to Emma. And then I can cast a four spell dark. for four CMC or less. I will cast Fire Mind Vessel. So I am down to less than half of my starting life total. I'm starting to starting to kind of feel the pressure here. And then I will move to my turn. I will untap. I will draw. So I draw my card for turn, and I'm looking at my hand, and it's pretty clear to me that I'm going to be dead on my next turn, so let's just go out with a bang. Okay, well, we'll just try and do as much damage as we can on the way out. So I'm going to play Gutter Snipe. This is gonna set me up so my instants and sorceries do damage to everybody, and that's what I'm trying to do, as much damage to everybody as I can. Then I'm going to play Fiery Intervention. Oh. I'm gonna blow up the Chromatic Lantern. If only Emma's creatures had five toughness, then I could have copied this card with Ralzeric, killed both the dragons, and I would have lived. But unfortunately, that's not the case, and I have to just fire this thing off, really just for the Gutter Snipe damage. Everyone takes two. Everyone takes two damage from Gutter Snipe. All right, so now I have to do something. I didn't leave up a true green land. So without this chromatic lantern, it's now or never. I just have to cast it now. I have a response. Yep. I'm gonna cast Assassin's Trophy, targeting your Vanifar, Cedric. All right, I'll grab a forest, put it on the battlefield. Emma knew that I needed that prime speaker, so I guess we're not friends anymore. So chromatic lantern gets blown up. 
And then this is weird, but I might as well do damage, so I'm gonna play Finale of Revelation for zero. That is embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, you heard that right. X is equal to zero. Uh, like I said, I just try to do as much gutter snipe damage as possible. All right, everyone takes two damage. Pass the turn. I did, I did what I could. You did a lot of damage, actually. Yeah. That was pretty good. Josh actually did us all a big favor here because he put Emma at nine life. So this could give us a chance to take her out before she gets too far ahead of the rest of us. Okay, untap, upkeep, draw. All right, here we go. Can I get back in it? Tatyova, Benthic, Druid. All right. Tatyova is amazing right now. I have a land in my hand. All right, all right. Feeling pretty good. Slowly but surely getting back into this game. Then I will play a forest, and that will trigger Tatyova, which means I will gain a life and draw a card. Next, I'm going to play Growing Rites of Itlamok. Ah. You normally don't want to cast this card until you have four creatures out, but it also does have this mode people forget about. It can help you find a creature. And I will reveal... Hydroid Crisis. Oh. This will go to my hand. So this is the exact kind of turn that I need in order for me to get back into this game. Draw a really awesome card that can draw me more cards. Great start. So I'll go to my attack step. Hadana's Climb will trigger. It will target Tatyova, so. Is it 4-4 now? Yep. And I will actually activate Kior in my second main phase. So this will go down to six and I won't tap. Mox Amber. And then, please do not kill me, it is your turn. Okay, untap and draw. That Hydroid Krasis, Emma knows it's in Cedric's hand. I'm hoping that that will raise him on the threat meter maybe enough that Emma goes after him instead of me. It's a long shot, but it's possible. Let's go ahead and cast Resurgence. Saddle up, we're going to combat. Twice. Emma's got two huge creatures in the air and... Let's get dangerous. Then I'm going to minus Domri, and that's going to make my Niv Mizzet Reborn fight your Gutter Snipe. Yep, Gutter Snipe, and we'll lose that fight and die. Okay, well, killing my Gutter Snipe, yeah, that's a, that's a bad sign. And then I'm gonna go to combat, Niv Mizzet Reborn and Paradise Druid attack Josh, and Rakdos the Showstopper will be coming at you, Jimmy. Okay, uh, I will block with my Roalesque Apex Hybrid. And because it has Trample, it's still gonna do two damage to me. And then I will elect to have my Roalesque Apex Hybrid actually go to the graveyard so that I can get its death trigger. So I get to proliferate twice. I'm gonna proliferate twice on your Tatiova and twice on my Evolution Sage. Josh is not long for this world, so I think I'm gonna need Cedric as an ally to have any chance against what Emma's doing right now. All right. Uh, oh yeah, um, so we well, already took your damage, yep. but I obviously have no blockers and I'm gonna take 10. Yep. Going down to five. And then I'm going to go to my following combat step and I'm going to have niv -Mizzet Reborn attack you, Josh, and Rakdos the Showstopper attack Kiora. I guess my Kiora is biting the dust here. So back into the command zone. Okay, uh, yep, I have no mana, I have no blockers, I can do nothing. And I got killed by a giant five color dragon. No! <laughs> We're down to three players now. I don't know if it makes it a favorable position, but there's not a lot of attention on me just yet, so I still feel pretty good about things. So my life total is pretty low, and even though I have these big creatures that can theoretically be blockers here, it just feels safer to go ahead and be very positive that I'm not dying next turn. All right, black, black, white, white. I will cast Kaya's Wrath. Wow, that's big. Emma playing this board wipe right now seems a little weird to me because she has the strongest board state by far. It's a pretty wild play. Emma's hand must be unbeatable if she's willing to kill some of her own creatures. Now I'm getting worried. Okay, so my board's gonna get wiped. So will mine. I gain three life. And niv Mizet goes back to the command zone for the first time. Blue and green aren't really known for having haste creatures. Letting them untap with some creatures on their side of the battlefield is a way that they could randomly just spike me out of the game. So if I can just keep the board clear, then they're not gonna surprise kill me. I think that's enough turn for me. That was quite the turn. Okay, I will untap and I'll draw my card. Um, I'll cast Flood of Recollection to return Finale of Revelation. 
from my graveyard to my hand. All right. Emma did just board wipe, so things are looking pretty safe for me overall. If I can rebuild my hand, I definitely have a chance of getting back into this game. And that's gonna do it for my turn. All right, untap my seven lands. Draw for my turn. All right, here it is. This is one of my favorite cards. So I'll play Hydroid Crisis for five. <laughs> So it'll be a 5-5 five, five and I will draw two cards and gain two life. So this is everything I'm looking for. Big creature, draw cards, gain life. I'm working my way back into this game. I'm starting to feel a little bit better about things. And then uh, I'll go to my attack step. So I will trigger Hedonis Climb and it will target my Hydroid Krasis. And that will also transform Hedonis Climb into Winged Temple of Araska. So the existence of Winged Temple of Araska, that's a little bit scary. I'm pretty worried about that card being on the battlefield while I'm at such a low life total. And then I will follow up with a copy of Treasure Map. Okay, yeah. So Treasure Map is great for what it does, which is helping me find more big creatures in card drawing, but I've gotta live long enough to be able to actually take advantage of it. And I'm not sure I'm gonna get to do that. And that's all I've got for my turn. All right, untap and draw. So I'm just going to plus Domri and add a red mana to my mana pool and then cast Joda, Archmage Eternal. I know that card very well. So this card's kind of bait. I want them to just keep taking turns off and using their resources to try and answer what I have going on. And Joda looks like this big, scary, mana-reducing thing, when in reality, that's just not the case, and I'm just buying time. And then, I'm done. Oh, interesting. I didn't think I'd made alive right now, so count your blessings, right, folks? 19's a lot. Uh, I'll do it. I'm gonna cast Finale of Revelation for four this time and I will draw one, two, three, four. Oof. I think I'm still hiding in the corner right now because Emma and Cedric are looking straight at each other. I drew a bunch of cards. If I can just keep them off my back for a couple of turns, I'm not out of this game yet. I will play a land for the turn and I will pass the turn to you, Cedric. All right, I will untap all of my lands, including my winged temple of Araska. Okay, during your upkeep, before you draw, I'm gonna play Death's Route, targeting your Hydroid Crisis. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> and that'll get a mountain that I'll put into play tab. So I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated because every time I start to develop a battlefield, it gets destroyed. All right, well, I'm gonna activate treasure map, which will allow me to scry one. So I'll take a look at the top card. Interesting. I don't even know what that card is. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to keep it on top, okay? Yeah, I want to see what this is. Draw a card. How interesting is it? It's not that interesting. It is contentious plan. Oh, that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so I will proliferate onto my treasure map and draw a card. Okay. And I am going to cast Affectionate Indric. Oh. And it will target the Joda. So they both die. Boom. It does feel kind of bad not getting my two for one with the Indric, but I don't really know what she's got going on in her hand, so it's just safer to just get rid of that thing. This is exactly what I was hoping. Cedric and Emma are just battling back and forth, focusing only on each other's boards. If they keep doing this, it's gonna be great for me. We're at war. That's just reasonable. We are at war. It is your turn. All right, so we're untapping, we're drawing. Everything's going according to plan. Cedric spent his entire turn dealing with this Joda that didn't actually matter very much, and Jimmy didn't do anything other than draw a bunch of cards, and I'm just getting to untap again with all this stuff in my hand. I'm feeling great about my position from here. All right, we are going to plus Domri for a red mana, and then I'm going to cast Niv-Mizzet Reborn for the third time. Emma just has so much value because she always is able to replay her commander. I don't know how I can keep up with this. All right, trigger one. Good. Two. Good. Three. Good. Four. Okay. Five. Nope. Six. E. Seven. Ah. Eight. E. Nine. Oh, no. Ten. So I suppose I'll be adding a hostage taker, a bedevil, and an expansion explosion to my hand. That's pretty good. Okay. Oh, uh, this is bad news. This is bad news. This feels like a backbreaking play. It's removal, removal, and card draw. This is bad news. And then I'm gonna tap four mana and cast hostage taker, which is going to take, like any good pirate, it wants a treasure map. It does. 
A pirate needs a treasure map, Cedric. Ah, jeez. She's got so much card advantage now, I'm just not sure I can keep up. The game, it's just starting to slip away from me. And that's gonna be my turn. Okay, I'm gonna untap. I will draw for turn. Because I know what's in Emma's hand, I need to choose the best option out of my hand that doesn't put me super far behind in case she decides to go after me. I'm gonna tap seven, and I'm going to cast Entrancing Melody, targeting your niv Mizzet Reborn. Whoa. Okay. Stealing the Mizzet here is great. Emma's at low life, I have a 6-6 six, six flyer. If she doesn't get rid of it, it means that she's in a dangerous position too. Touche, Jimothy. Touche. Jimothy? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna pass the turn to you, Cedric. All right, time to untap. And time to draw. Now here's a card that can get me back in this game all by itself. This is exciting, okay. I'm gonna play Biogenic Ooze. Oh my. Oh, okay. I get to create a 2-2 two -two green ooze creature token. So there's that. You got it. And then I'm going to tap three green and one to create another ooze creature token. And then at the end of turn, I get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each ooze creature I control. So all three. <laughs> It's a news party. Everything's growing. This turn's a really good one. And it's your turn. All right, let's get to untapping. Draw for turn. So my plans are coming together at this point. Let's start off with revenge. I'm going to double my life total and half your life total, Jimmy. Oh no. You lose 10 and I gain 12. Oh, this is so bad. I'm at nine life and I know she has a burn spell in her hand. That's, this is scary. Well, that's a swing. Yeah. Then I'm going to tap three and be devil, which will destroy biogenic ooze. Very, very happy to have this biogenic ooze off the table. It would have ran away with the game very easily. And I don't have any more sweepers now that Rakdos and Kaya's Wrath have both been expended. So I will pay two life for Godless Shrine and then cast the treasure map that Hostage Taker has taken hostage. I have more cards than everyone. I have a better card advantage engine than everyone. I just need to make sure that I don't die. And finally, I will minus two my Domri and have Hostage Taker fight your ooze. So they'll trade. Okay. Oh. And I'm done. Okay, I can't believe I'm still alive. I'm gonna untap, draw for turn. I'm going to tap three mana and cast Vivian, Champion of the Wild. And then I am going to minus two her. And I'm gonna look at the top three cards in my library. Uh, I will exile one of them face down and then I will put the other two on the bottom of my library like that. All right. I'll go to combat. Emma, I'm gonna swing at you with your own niv Mizzet Reborn for six damage in the air. That's just reasonable. One and two and three and four and five and six. And then I will pass the turn to you, Cedric. All right, time to untap, folks. This is the first time I've got to untap with a creature that can actually attack for what feels like forever. So in some ways, I am starting to turn the corner a little bit. All right. Tishana, voice of thunder. Row, 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 row. Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll draw two. Nice. So then Tishana's a three, three. So this isn't the greatest Tishana that's ever been cast, but it's what I need, creatures and card drawing. So not bad. Okay. Kill a Domri. Yep, that's what I'm about to do with this ooze token. What if I told you I can kill Jimmy next turn if I draw a land, if this Domri is still on the battlefield? Do we have a deal? You could also just attack him directly and then I don't even need to draw a land and he just dies. Ooh, I like that. So I think my best chance to win is if I can make this just me versus somebody else. So I'm gonna help Emma kill Jimmy so that we score up 1v1 where I feel like I'm at an advantage. Cedric, I don't think this is a good idea. You need me to help you defeat Emma. Do you really think you can beat her 1v1? All right. I'm going to attack Jimmy with my ooze token for three. Well, unfortunately I have no blockers. So I'm gonna take three damage. Um, I'm done. All right. Okay, there's a lot of plotting between them going on, but they're not the only ones that can formulate a plan. I still think I'm in this game. I'm dead, aren't I? Uh, so something in that ballpark. I'm going to plus Dom Rain and get a red mana. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to play Explosion targeting Jimmy for six damage and then me to draw six cards. So this spell is gonna deal six damage to me and kill me, but like I said, I was ready for this. Okay, in response, I'm gonna cast Lazotep Plating and me and permanent I control gain hexproof until end of turn. Yep, that's fine, it's fine. Oh God, oh God, I have overextended a lot. It's nice that I still get the cards, but if Jimmy lives, 
I really hope I don't die next turn. This is really bad for me. All right. I have a response. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so this is on the stack? That is on the stack. Okay. I am going to play Frilled Mystic. No! <gasps> so, Josh, which spell do I counter? Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Wow. What do I do? I want Jimmy to die, but I don't want Emma to draw that many cards. Cedric, no, 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 no. You want to counter her spell. She's going to draw six cards off of this, dude. Cedric did a lot of work last turn to help Jimmy die. If he double crosses me right now, he's dead to me. <laughs> I'm going to counter. Oh, oh boy, boy, Alberto. Uh, Jimmy, I'm I'm sorry. No. You knighted me and everything, but I'm going to counter your spell. Yep. Lazotep plating will get countered. I'm gonna draw six cards very quickly before anyone takes it back. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six. Okay. Jimmy, you take six. Uh, with that, I will take six damage. Go to zero. Well, I guess I died to an explosion. <laughs> ah! The debris is gonna kill me. No! And I'm going to wipe myself off the board. The Mizzet is going to go back to your command zone. All right, you get your six cards. All according to plan. I always, I always knew Cedric had my back. There's never any, never any doubt in the world. This is all what I thought was going to happen. Then. Oh no, there's a then. I'll cast Knight of Autumn, and I'll go to twenty. Ooh, nice. Normally I was kind of planning to use the destroy an artifact or enchantment mode, maybe give more value, which is what my deck's built around. But I just need to not die right now. And with this Dawn Ring on the battlefield, Knight of Autumn even just has three power and trades with any of his creatures on the battlefield. And that's all I can do. All right, here we go. It's a comeback tale. I was dominating at the beginning, then I was doing nothing. And now my biggest draw step of the game. Ugh. <laughs> all right, I'm going to play Jade Light Ranger. When it enters the battlefield, explore twice. Island, that goes to my hand. Next explore, breeding pool, that also goes to my hand. So normally drawing two lands right now, not ideal, but with Tashana on the battlefield, it's not so bad. And then I'm gonna activate Winged Temple of Oraska, targeting Tashana. And I will attack in the air for eight. I can't block. So you're gonna see me going down to 12 here. If he keeps drawing cards like this, this Tashana's just going to be lethal next turn, and I don't have enough blockers to stop the damage from coming in. I'm starting to really get worried. And then on my end step, trigger growing rights, and it will transform into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. Yep. Because more mana, that's what you needed. And I'm all done. All right, untap. This is actually a super tight race. Emma has a ton of cards in hand and resources. However, with that Wing Temple of Razka, Cedric has a way to get damage in every turn, and she's at 12 now. I don't know who's gonna take this. This is really, really a nail biter. I will plus Domri, getting a green mana, and then I will cast Tatyova, Benthic Druid of my own. This card is one of the ways I can actually gain a little bit of life, and I do have a few extra lands in my hand. And Tadiovi is also a 3-3, so blocking is something that I'm pretty comfortable doing with her. Then I will play Golgari Guildgate. My Tatyova is then going to let me gain a life and draw another card. Best part of the game. Best part. <laughs> then I'll play Roll Reversal. So I'm going to be giving you one basic planes and you are going to give me your winged temple of Araska. Oof. This card is much closer to me destroying Cedric's most important permanent and me just giving up a land in order to do that. I don't think I'm gonna be doing too much with this winged temple of Araska, but this is a way for me to just take it away from Cedric. The winged temple is definitely my easiest route to victory. So this is gonna make things a lot more difficult for me. Then I'm going to finally get around to casting this store of Dev Karen Lich. So store of in a lot of situations would be scary, but right now it's just a blocker that I think I can beat. Okay, move to my declare attack step. Attack for three. I will not block. All right. I will take three. So this is a risky attack, but I have a blocker or two that I can sit back behind and this is just a way for me to actually start applying pressure. That's a little annoying, but what she doesn't know is I've got one more trick up my sleeve. All right, here we go. At the end of your second main phase, I'm going to play Teferi's Time Twist. So I'm gonna choose Tishana. Ooh. Oh no. So Tishana will go away. It will come back at the beginning of the end step, which is now. It'll come back with a plus one, plus one counter. 
and I get to draw four cards. All right, so this is a problem. Now Cedric's gonna draw several more cards, and it's a shot out. It's going to be worth a lot more damage. This is bad. So now I've got four new cards. It's still the end step. It's still the end step. I ain't gonna lie, it's a really good four cards. And I will play Dream Eater. Whoa. So this takes care of a blocker. It's a bunch of damage in the air out of nowhere. I don't wanna jinx it, but can I win this thing? All right, so I'm going to surveil four. I'm gonna put these two on top and these two into the graveyard. And I will bounce Storev with Dream Eater. So with one blocker, currently I'm only taking 12 damage, but this looks really bad. He's seen a lot of cards here. What are the odds that he can just add one damage, get a blocker out of the way? I'm not literally at zero life, but I can see the writing on the wall. All right, I'll untap. Uh, I will drop my turn. She's only got one blocker left. And if I can get rid of it, I've got lethal on the battlefield. I will play Territorial Allosaurus with Kicker. And I'll have my big dinosaur fight Tatiova. Yep, it's, yep. All right, I have zero blockers at this point, and if my math is correct, he has way more than 13. And I am going to attack you, Emma, with all of my creatures. Rawr. And then I died to a horde of green creatures. So I attack with everything, she's got no blockers, and I win the game. Yes! <laughs> That was a really fun game. Good game. Yeah. Good game. That was Good game. The game. The game. The game. Boom. This was a really fun game. It was super interactive. War of the Spark looks incredible. There are so many new planeswalkers, and they've really designed them in new ways that we haven't seen on that card type before. I think all these new planeswalkers are going to send a huge ripple effect through Magic as a whole. It's going to be really exciting to see how they're used in Standard, Brawl, Commander, and even beyond that. So I'm looking forward to putting some of these in my Commander decks and just seeing how much work they can do. So I'm mostly known for playing on the pro side and the pro scene of things, but in Brawl, I'll tell you, the negotiating and politicking that goes on is really, really awesome. This was some of the most fun I've ever had playing Magic. I never thought I'd be doing this. I'd love to do it again. Brawl and Commander are just so free and that you can just do things because you want to. Getting to just hang out with some friends and watch magic cards do magic things is almost an entirely different game and I couldn't love it more. It just goes to show, it doesn't matter whether you're a tournament grinder or a kitchen table type, if you look the same as the person sitting across from you or act the same or speak the same language, none of that matters. Magic really is for everybody. Yay! Right, you made it to the end of the episode. It was a good one. It was a lot of fun. Oh boy, what an ending too. I mean, always. I had to sit there and watch most of it, but it was still fun. You know what? How about my Lazatep plating just not working? That, yeah, How about, about me that. being like, Ace in the hole, oh, I got this. <laughs> Check up my sleeve. I gotta say that I did not think it was gonna end how it did. Me I, neither. I thought Emma was winning for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was a crazy, crazy end to the game. Uh, of course, big thanks to Ultra Pro for sponsoring and supporting the show. Their products, again, adorn all the times we play uh, game nights. Other playmats are there, their sleeves, their dice, their deck boxes, and all that. And if you wanna theme your stuff out as well, you can just go and shop Ultra Pro at your local game store or wherever you can find it in the world. Yeah, you know, people forget, but War of the Spark still takes place on Ravnica, so yeah. all the guild themed stuff is still good for all these new commanders and if you build a brawl deck or whatever you do so that's a really good way to support us is just pick up that ultra pro stuff yeah also ultra pro gives away a ton of things every single episode and this one's no different so if you want to get in on winning some ultra pro stuff or you might get some card kingdom swag as that's well right. they throw their hat in the ring jimmy how do we win super simple so if you go to facebook our facebook page will have the post sharing the episode all you have to do is tag a friend in the comments on twitter all you have to do is tweet a link to the episode and use the hashtag game night that way we can find Find your entries, and we will pick the winners in exactly one week from the release of this episode. Yeah, so uh, go in there right now. Go ahead and tag somebody. Put that hashtag on so you can win the stuff. And one last message here for the patrons. Mm -hmm. We said at the start, but in case you missed it, we're going to be announcing the winner of our Game Nights audition. We're going to be choosing the patron who's going to be a guest on this show. Yeah. You have to tune in to episode 266 of our podcast, The Command Zone. Uh, that's where we're going to be announcing the winner. I guess this was kind of an announcement for an announcement. Yeah. Will you be the next Jacob? Who, Who knows? knows? Find out. Episode 266. And that wraps it up, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.